Hey, welcome. This is Faster, Further, Fresher. How Jets Pizza is changing food delivery with drones. Produced by Nation's Restaurant News, this program is being sponsored and presented by Zipline. Zipline is an international autonomous delivery system specializing in on-demand drone delivery and instant logistics serving healthcare, consumer products, and food interests. I'm Alan Little, and on behalf of NRN, I'll be your moderator for today's program with Aaron Nelson of Jets Pizza and Keller Renato Clifton of Zipline. Before we hear about what's up with Jets and about what Zipline is and does, well, let's handle some housekeeping. So, you know, this presentation is being recorded for on-demand viewing. You'll receive an email with that link when that replay is available. If at any time you do experience difficulties with the audio or the slides do not advance, press the F5 key on a Windows system to refresh your webinar console. Use Command and R keys on an Apple device. If that fails, look to the help widget at the bottom of your screen or type your technical question into the Q&A area. The Q&A area is also where you can enter questions you might have about our topic. Type yours in at any time and we'll get to as many as we can later in the session. Before we press our presenters into action, let me tell you a bit about them. Aaron Nilsson, since 2019, has been Chief Information Officer for Jets Pizza. Earlier, among other marketing and technology roles, excuse me, he was a Head of Digital Experience for Workwear Maker Carhartt and at Domino's Pizza. His positions included Program Manager of Digital Experience and Manager of Global In-Store Technology. Keller Renato Clifton co-founded and has been chief executive of San Francisco Bay Area based Zipline since 2011. Previously, he was a professional rock climber and a scientist at Harvard University's Bauer Genomics Lab, where he built molecular automata or DNA computers that manu can be manufactured by human cells. Okay, so for additional information about Aaron and Keller, check out their fuller backgrounders in the speaker area of your webinar console. And with that information sharing done, let's uh, take some time to hear from our speakers about their organization's ethos and their roles there. And we'll start with Aaron. Hey, Aaron. Hey, thank you for having me. This is uh, such an exciting topic. Yeah, a um, little bit of background about me. So I've been, um, you know, I, I'm older than the internet, which is a thing that freaks my kids out to know that that's possible. And I've been doing kind of e-commerce my whole career. Uh, just a bunch of stuff for General Motors. And when the the bankruptcy hit. We I bumped over to Domino's for a long set and got my indoctrination to pizza, and then was at Carhartt. But now I'm uh, really loving my gig here. I'm the CIO at Jets Pizza. Jets Pizza, if you don't know it, because it's we've only got about 430 locations, so we're in about half the states. It's a, a higher end kind of a you know a, a, an incredibly delicious pizza, crunchy crust. Uh, you know, it's a deeper dish. The Detroit style is what we're famous for. Uh, it's a, it's a really great product. I, I really love being here, and we're just looking forward to doing more with technology. The, hey, Aaron, Aaron yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to ask yeah. you something. But... We've actually, with the technology, we've uh, had such a, a couple of big wins over the past five years. We've actually uh, more than quadrupled our digital sales. I don't know if you can advance the digital sales a slide. You can see... Um, what what we've done what we've been able to do by just really focusing on digital i got my job somewhere down in the yellow and you know there's a lot of things that go in there there's a lot of artificial intelligence improvements and seo and you know new websites and designs and hd videos and servers and there's like a million components but it's all those individual components that have just really added up over time to just make some really big strides in terms of total digital sales so this i think this graph really showcases what the power of leaning into new technology and better technology can do for your business. Uh, but we're really excited to meet Keller. I don't know, Keller, do you want to maybe give a background? Yeah, happy to, Aaron. I, I, uh, I mean, I guess, you know, briefly, I started Zipline in 2013. Um, our backgrounds were in robotics and AI and software. And it always seemed to us like it would probably be possible to build an automated logistics system for Earth. And the thing that really excited about us about that was, look, you know, if you could find a way of automating delivery to businesses and to homes, you could design something that would be 10 times as fast, half the cost, and zero mission. Um, and from a, from a mission perspective, the thing that always really inspired us about that was we felt this would likely be the first logistic system that would serve all people equally. Um, so you know, today's zipline, uh, just I mean, uh, uh, crossed 80 million commercial autonomous miles. It's become the largest commercial autonomous system on earth of any kind. We serve about 45 million people day in and day out. For the first six years of the company, we focused entirely on healthcare use cases. So today we deliver 75% of the national blood supply um, of two different countries. For example, we've delivered 18 million doses of vaccine. 
Um, and then a couple of years ago, we you know, started understanding that the technology, you know, especially the delivering to homes in automated ways was going to be really, really powerful for quick commerce and food delivery as well. Um, so, you know, Jets, Jets was one of our very first kind of like visionary partners on this front, and we're super excited to talk more about it today. Hey, thanks, Keller. Hey, Aaron, can I ask you something? I'm sorry, I wanted to backtrack for just a half second. When you showed that uh, digital growth in digital sales, that was a pretty yeah. impressive jump. Was there anything that sort of stands out about what had to change on the operational side for that, if any? I mean, was there any sort of anything stand out about that big increase in what it might meant to operations? Yeah, I, I think it's, you know, there were a couple factors, but the biggest one was, you know, we were a, a company founded in 1978 and uh, John Jets is just over there in the corner. And, uh, you know, that guy who started uh, making pizza out of a, like a, basically like a glorified liquor store, I had to come along and convince him that, hey, like we've, you know, uh, that you should have enough confidence to move forward and let us, and, you know, kind of like take off the cuffs and, and like lean into these things. His ability to like trust the process and like you know give over phone control to a phone bot, something he's lived on for forever, uh, let us take orders uh, using artificial intelligence. All these things, that trust at the executive level, that I think is one of the biggest uh, choke points for a lot of the new innovation for company, for basically for every company. But I think these small and medium sized uh, chains, that's where they're struggling the most. Uh, from an operations perspective, I mean, we had all the standard things that like would be no different than putting in a point of sale. You got to do new training and get new answers and stuff like that. But I think the bigger aha moment, moment is that the executive staff here is, has trusted the process and let us move forward. And we've seen results because that, of it. That whole executive buying thing, that's a great point to make. Thanks. Uh, appreciate that. Sure. I'm sure there'll be some of those conversations coming up as you move into your next exciting yeah. frontier in technology. So, uh, hey, thanks for that. Uh, let's pivot the conversation a little bit, if we might, and uh, let's ask Keller a little bit about about the zipline operation. So, Keller, you mentioned a few things, but I know I know we have a video, uh, and I'm dying to show it to people because it's pretty exciting. So, maybe okay. we can move on to that. And I would mention to the people in the audience, the videos are going to play. The videos play in the media player window where you see all the speakers right now. So if you want to enlarge that area on your console to see more detail in the video, go ahead and do that right now. And then I'll let Keller talk a little bit about what's going on with these videos. Uh, Keller, cheers. Yeah, happy to. So I guess you know, one cool thing to show, and, and yeah, you can click the, uh, the box with the leftward facing arrow to expand it. Um, this is a 24 seven time lapse of our operations. So we, Zipline actually started outside the US in Rwanda. Um, in this video, you can see uh, it's you know 3 a.m., 4 a.m., so the middle of the night, the team is really, really busy, and you can see autonomous aircraft there are being loaded onto the launcher and launching. This is all using Platform 2. We'll talk about, sorry, Platform 1. We'll talk about Platform 2 in a sec. But, you know, there are 50 aircraft out making deliveries simultaneously for most parts of the day. You know, before noon, we've delivered over 3,500 products. You can see the team's doing the work there and the security camera on the, the security footage on the right. Um, and... You know, this kind of looks like, I mean, every one of those triangles on this map is an aircraft going out and making a delivery. So um, sometimes we show people this and they originally would say, you know, wow, that's so amazing. And um, I love that, you know, video of the simulation of what this could look like one day, you know, and, and it was uh, kind of frustrating to us because we had to say, that's not a simulation like that happened yesterday, you know, and this is the reason that we put the CCTV on the right hand side so people can see it. I think that a lot of people, you know, hear about these ideas of like autonomous delivery or drone delivery. And it's kind of like, well, that's on sci-fi. That can't be real. Um, the reality is, you know, there's this quote: "The future's here. It's just not evenly distributed yet." Um, this is true with this technology as well. And in some countries, this technology is at fully national scale, serving every, you know, serving tens of millions of people. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think it's just kind of helpful to kind of like see what that looks like and. Uh, the, the, what we're launching with Jets is our next generation service, which we call Platform 2. We can talk about that more in a sec if it's helpful. Hope, Alan, you're muted. Uh, might be muted, Alan. Yeah. yeah, I am. There you go. I am. I would be muted. That would be the moderator's muted. Um, the second video, is that something that'll tie into a later conversation, or do you want to run through that at this point? Yeah, we could. I mean, I guess, you know, before jumping into the second video, I think that um, it, we spent the first um, 
eight years of the company scaling operations, really figuring out how to get regulatory permission for this kind of technology, how to do it in a safe, reliable way, how to operate 24 seven, um, how to integrate with a lot of, you know, our partners, complicated software systems to make delivery work in a way that is magical and instantaneous. What we kind of, what we heard again and again, especially from US partners, um, was that home delivery was really the holy grail. You know, so many of our partners want the ability to teleport things from their buildings, whether it's a hospital or a Jets Pizza or a Walmart, another one of our customers in the US. Um, you know, they want the ability to teleport things from that building to any home that they need to send the thing to. You know, today we're using, to solve that problem, we're using a 4,000 pound gas combustion vehicle driven by a person to deliver something that weighs on average five pounds or six pounds. So you don't actually have to be a physicist to know that's actually a really inefficient way of solving that problem. It's <laughs> very expensive, it's surprisingly slow, and it's terrible for the environment. And so we, we actually, you know, it's pretty clear that there's gonna be this exciting transformation over the next five years toward new ways of solving that. And, but by the way, we'll do that four and a half billion times in the US this year alone. So although it's expensive and slow, it's happening <laughs> a lot. Uh, you know, many, many times a day, as demonstrated by you know the sales figures that Aaron was was sharing. And so, you know, there's tremendous demand for this kind of delivery from customers. But the way that we're solving the problem is we're using technology that's 100 years old. And so, we think over the next five years, there's going to be this exciting transformation toward ways of solving the problem. Hey, if you want to deliver something that weighs five pounds, do it with a vehicle that weighs about 50 pounds. Do it with a vehicle that is extremely fast, is autonomous, and electric. Um, and so that really is like, that's the technology that Zipline builds. It's the reason that we built Platform 2 um, with partners like Jets Pizza to kind of like solve that problem. The, before we show the video, I guess, and, and Aaron, you should jump in, um, is like really the way we talk about it, none of our customers care about drones. None of our customers care about autonomous robots, anything like that. What our customers care about is magical delivery and teleportation. And so we really talk about the technology is basically showing up and installing a magical sci-fi portal in the wall of every Jets pizza so that now, you know, Jets team members can take that amazing, delicious pizza that Aaron was just describing. They can put it in a box and they can basically just pass it through the magical portal in the wall and then it's teleported to the customer. I, could, I couldn't agree more. The, you know, there's one word you're kind of bouncing around that maybe I'll just take a second and like toss in there. Please. It's that, you know, the if the ex, we th I think that the experience of how you get your pizza matters. And drones are just, it's just cool. You know, for us, we're the flying pizza people by logo, right? We just karmically, we need to tackle this. We care about a good product. <laughs> that includes good pizza, good operations, and good experience. And if you don't care, and frankly, our customers are the people who care. They, they want a great experience. If you don't care, order McDonald's or order Domino's because you don't care about your pizza. Uh, we want customers to feel special. Uh, we value the, their money and their business. This is just better, cooler, faster. You know, the thing that's really, you are talking about like, uh, you, know, you know, in a very humble way, you're talking about like delivering blood and vaccines in Rwanda. What's so amazing about this tech is that that's so different than, they need that. They need to get that that way. The, the cars will work. There's, you know, inherent drawbacks, you know, struggling to find drivers and it's 4,000 pounds and it's gas emissions and it's traffic lights and accidents and 16 year old, 16 year old drivers and texting and driving. There's all this like ecosystem of stuff. But for us, I, what I think is the cool thing is that we get to do this. This is an opportunity that's like never come along before to make this thing that the, our pizza is about the same since 1978. We get to make this cooler. This is a, this is a new thing that will uh, that could be a separation for us. I mean, over time, it'll probably be a little bit more ubiquitous, but man, th the opportunity to lean in and to be that cooler option right away, it's not the humbleness of like vaccines in Rwanda. That's like so amazing. Like it you know, feels all the feels. This is the pure fun thing. This is how pizza should be. We're not, you know, we're not delivering vaccines. We're delivering a lot of pepperoni, but this is, the, but this other use case, this fun part, I think that's, that's a part of why I think this will really catch on. And it's hey, a you know, Aaron, can, I, can, can I ask you a little bit? Obviously, I think your excitement is showing here, uh, you know, 
ramp it up a little bit, will you? We want the people right. to know how you really feel about this. Uh, was this along the lines you're just talking about? Was that sort of some of the things that made you believe this is a good time to invest in drone delivery? Look at it and see what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's like a couple things that like key this to be the time uh, for this to take place. You know, we're you know, if you're a business owner right now, especially with a, we've invested a ton of like time, money, and energy into getting like our own fleet of drivers and insurance and practices and like logs and checkbooks and finding people and stuff like that. That got really hard, especially with the third party marketplaces, which I know it's like, it's like a tongue in cheek thing to say, but like effectively the third party marketplaces are, they're kind of stealing our drivers and then selling them back to us, which is exactly what gangsters do. That is a gangster move. And then they're effectively taking about half the profits, like on a roll up big number, you know, like typical restaurants, they may have like, you know, uh, food and labor and durable goods and stuff is about 50%. And you may have about 50% markup in, a, you know, like a lot of pizza shop numbers are going to slide around a little bit. But if those, mar and we're not going to talk about specific numbers, but it is well known fact by anyone in the industry that those marketplaces, third party marketplaces are taking about half, uh, taking about 20 some percent in a lot of cases. So of the 50%, they're taking about 25%. That's a, they're, they're effectively, if that goes out to scale and we don't come up with cool experiences, that compete with the third-party marketplaces with those gangsters we're we're looking at a future where you know the profitability line is going to move halfway up the chain we're going to this is not a like to do it this the, the the need to be innovative the need to the find experiences that our customers not just like but love is not a hey that wouldn't it be cool if there there is a severe part of our future that is dependent upon finding those things. And that's why this with the onset of third party marketplaces and the, you know, the whole back and forth that has, we, we feel like we have to hit this now. We have to be a lean in and back to that slide. You don't have to go back, but like, I think we all saw it. The step up that we saw from all those things that are an in innovation, we've got the track record to say, our, our customers have the track record to say, look, if you build it, we will keep ordering the pizzas. Uh, you know, this is the time. This is right now is the time. And driver and drivers getting really hard. You know, insurance in Florida and insurance in other states that have like all this stuff going on. This it's this this is a done correctly. We think this could be not, a, just a hair shy of a godsend for our for our franchisees, not our customers. Our customers will will love this too, but our franchisees are struggling to hire. They're struggling to find uh, you know teams that uh, you know don't want to be on TikTok and doing stuff. They want to come in and work hard and you know be in traffic and make that money. Uh, you know, we, we want to keep our driver staff. We love our drivers, but it's getting really hard to find these people. This is a, this is the time. This is the perfect meshing of when this should happen. And we're hoping that this, uh, just goes off and goes gangbusters. And if I can, I mean, Aaron, you beautifully said, and if I can add a couple ideas, I mean, one is that going a lot faster will dramatically improve the quality of the product, right? Like getting, a hot pizza delivered to you when it is three minutes out of the oven versus 40 minutes out of the oven yeah. is a fundamentally different experience in terms of the, the, you know, the quality of the product and the brand. And yeah. I think that uh, people probably don't even appreciate that. I think one of the things that's going to make it possible is to actually provide an in restaurant experience in people's homes, which I don't, yeah. you know, I think that's kind of what instant delivery is supposed to do, but it doesn't really do. But what if yeah. like, the food were actually just as good yeah or, as if you were uh, sitting in the restaurant you know i'll say just one other thing that's interesting i think everyone i think you're going to show a video here that kind of shows some logistics and stuff but i mean everyone yeah. gets a concept that the drone comes and gets it you know for us one of the things that helps us be you know passionate and lean in is when we think about you know we don't we don't want to we don't we intentionally don't drive 20 uh take a pizza to a house 20 minutes away because the product is just gonna be poor and you're gonna tell your neighbor and post on Facebook or Reddit or wherever you are, you're gonna tell that that word gets out that you got a crappy product. But with this re good product, like let's say it's a three mile radius, we think the possibility of maybe a six mile radius and not that those are exact numbers, but like just, just like as an example, given a, um, you know, like a, a balanced population base in a theoretical place, a three minute radius or three mile radius versus a six mile radius actually quadruples the addressable market for that. This, this could be a boon for existing businesses, but the biggest win 
could be in new markets, places like the Domino's and the McDonald's of the world. They've got one all over the place. We're still like growing. We've only got 430, half the states. So we're having active conversations with people who are like entering a market for the first time. Done well, this might impact the, uh, the theoretical max profit on an individual store and how frequently we play, we structure out our brick and mortars in a given in, in a given market. This this could be just fundamentally a game changer. And that's exactly what I was going to say, Aaron. To put specifics to it, I mean the platform two technology that we're launching with Jets has a ten mile range, and we can get we can do a delivery over ten miles twice as fast as a car can do a delivery over three miles. Yeah, amazing. So you, know, you can so. And because of the point you made, you know, the pi r squared, when you calculate the area of a circle, if you triple the radius that you're delivering out to, you almost 10x the number of customers who are reachable via instant delivery from that location. So a lot of these locations that we've looked at for jets in different metros, you're often increasing the number of customers who are reachable from a location by somewhere between 4 and 10x, which is, you know, that's, that's a big deal. Yeah, we were never going to get there. We're, we were never going to get there with cars. This is really the only way to do it. Hey, can I ask a question, Aaron, along these lines uh, in your excitement, again, shows, but uh, not but, but uh, what about the end user education on this? We think drones, we think excitement. You sort of, everyone's kind of admitted that this is kind of a cool thing. Yeah. Does it, do, you, do you envision sort of uh, user education about how this works? Is it going to be part of a cool marketing campaign or? How, yeah. how do you educate users about uh, about this use? You know, I've, a lot of that's going to be to be determined, um, you know, but we've tackled new technology before and it's gone well. I think, you know, uh, what I saw at, when I saw at Domino's and when I saw in other, you know, there's a thousand case studies on it, but like good tech can be the focus of a marketing window. And we, you know, at scale, we think that that can be a focus for us as well. Uh, how you, you know, in that product, in, in like, um, you know, product service experience and stuff like, you know, if those are the three pillars that make you decide to spend your hard earned money with us, this, this, how you got your, how you received your order, totally something that people would make as a, uh, as a, uh, as a reason to order jets and educating our customers and educating our in-store people. I don't, I think it's going to be, you know, uh, there's going to be a little bit of a feeling our way through the dark because it's, like never existed before, like it at you know for this specific use case, but I don't think it's it, it feels like a hurdle, not a barrier. Um, how exactly we'll do it? To be frank, I have I mean I have some like sketches in the back of my head, but like it's it's yet to be planned. But I think we're all in the building here feeling confident that it's it, it's not insurmountable. It's just you know figure it out, get a few under a belt, move forward, make plans. It's very doable. Hey, and, Keller, and I can um, say that you've obviously been successful. Me. In a lot of places, do you have anything to add about that thought? Education, you've had yeah, to educate gonna, people gonna, as you go. Exactly. I was going to say, you know, it's not the first time um, you know, we deliver to um, thousands of different hospitals and health facilities globally. We deliver to thousands, uh, you know, tens of thousands of homes. Um, we're soon going to be at millions of homes as we scale up the service in Dallas uh, uh, later this year. So. You know, we already, I mean, in Salt Lake City, for example, we're already delivering um, in par- a partnership with Reef uh, to uh, tons of different customer homes throughout the metro. And it's it's amazing the degree to which like, people figure it out pretty quick and then their expectations are like it, boop, instantly adjusted to that level. You know, like I've had, I mean, I've had conversations I've had conversations in sub-Saharan Africa with like nurses and doctors who receive you know, blood like deliveries of blood transfusions in this way, where for the first you know day, they're often like, wow, it's, you know, it's like a total miracle. It's as though Jesus Christ is delivering this from the sky. And then you know, over seven days, there's kind of sci-fi amazement. And then on day eight, they're like totally <laughs> bored of it. And they are, I've had one doctor look at his watch and look at me and say, it's 30 seconds late. What happened? You know, and and you realize like humans go from science fiction to entitlement in approximately seven days. And I have 100 percent confidence that that's what's great about humans. We rapidly adjust our expectations to what technology is capable of providing. I have no doubt that Jets Pizza you know, customers are going to rapidly update their expectations of they're like, oh, yeah, now I expect the pizza to be like 
hot out of the oven, delivered in three minutes, you know, less expensive. And I don't have to feel guilty about the environment because I know it was delivered by something that was zero emissions. So yeah. like their expectations are going to adjust to that. It will go from seeming weird to seeming completely normal and old hat in about seven days, given, you know, the 45 million customers that we serve today and the, you know, the, the way that we've seen people react. And um, I think that's, uh, I think that's great, you know, because the tech, the coolness of the technology only lasts for a little while. At the end of the day, what it comes down to is like, is this experience. just a fundamentally better experience for customers? Yep, I agree. That's cool. Thanks for that information. I, I was wondering, I know you've been through this, so obviously you have, have a feeling for what, what happens on the consumer side of this stuff. Uh, you've touched on some of this already, Keller, but I'm wondering if there's anything else uh, that might come to mind about why this is drone delivery is going to be transformative. I mean, I think you touched on a lot of it, but maybe I forgot to ask you something about transformative force in the restaurant industry. I mean, I think that, you know, one of the big points for us is just making sure that this is like incredibly easy for anybody to use. So, you know, when you, any Jets Pizza customer who is is ordering via their um, native platform is going to be able to just type in their address. As soon as we have that address, we'll show you a satellite image of your home and you get to tell us where you want the delivery, whether it's on you know, in your driveway or on your front doorstep or if you're in an apartment building, it might be in a grassy area outside or the roof. Totally up to you. Literally just click on the picture, ziplines, you know, autonomy and uh, machine learning does the rest where we, we will basically deliver to a very specific point every single time. It's way more reliable um, and we and we guarantee delivery within a 60 second window. So it's just there's actually I think the other thing maybe we haven't talked about is that I think the you know, the unreliability of a lot of the way that instant delivery works today, you don't know if it's going to come in, you know, 20 minutes or 50 minutes, and maybe it'll get delivered to the house next door. And maybe some of the food will be eaten while it's being delivered. I don't know if you know, but, you know, over 60%, this is for the, you know, delivery platforms that Aaron was talking about. When they survey the drivers for those platforms, over 60% report eating some of the food that they delivered in the last month. Sorry if I'm ruining like instant delivery for anybody on the call, <laughs> but that's a rather high percentage. Um, and you know, we're not robots at Jets. Don't... We're not at Jets. That was for the brands. That was Jets. Fries. Yeah, they the said pizza, they went in pizza. for a fry. We don't sell French fries, not us. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's a good point. It would be harder with pizza. Um, but you know, anyway, I think the um, you know the main point here is that uh, there's just like an opportunity. I, I think the bigger. I mean, Aaron said it perfectly. Like. So many of these amazing brands, these beloved brands in the United States, should not have their customers held hostage by a delivery platform just because they need access to instant delivery. Like they should have the ability to have instant delivery solutions that are integrated with their own native digital platforms that outcompete the delivery, uh, you know, technology that's being used by the by, by the. Um, you know, by the delivery platform. So I think, uh, you know, that's like a lot of our partners and, you know, Jets first and foremost, I think are seeing this strategic opportunity to say, oh, well, customers will come to our native platform because that is the best delivery experience on earth. Well, it also addresses one of those big concerns operators have had since the start of the third party, third party delivery organizations, that is owning the experience from one end to the other. You mentioned some of the un, un, unlikable aspects of it with drivers and some of the behavior, but just the fact that operators want to know that they are controlling the entire experience makes this a much more interesting proposition. Yeah. Um, you've touched on some of it, but I'm wondering if there are some things you can share additionally, uh, Keller, about the sort of things Zipline needs to achieve with drones to deliver those tangible benefits to restaurants and how your systems are designed are being designed to meet those needs. So did, if we skipped on that, uh, yeah. please. I can be brief on please. this. And yeah, and, and I see tons of awesome questions in the chat. Um, so we, we could easily jump into those in a sec here and, um, and please continue asking them. I think we want this to be really um, you know, interactive. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, I think at the end of the day, the good news here, I think it's interesting, you know, that, you know, the, the, one of the CEOs of the largest companies on earth was on 60 Minutes in 2013 saying, you know, drone delivery is real and we're going to be doing it in two years to every home in the US. I think when that didn't happen, it led to this sense of like, oh, well, actually, it's just vaporware. It's not real. It's never going to happen. Um, and I think what we know for sure now is like, okay, Technology is definitely, I mean, because again, you know, Zipline's done over 80 million commercial autonomous miles. To put that into perspective, that's 
between 30 and 100 times the scale of the entire rest of the industry combined. Um, and, and so it is clear that the technology is working. It is clear that the technology can operate 24-7, 365 in all weather. That's like, you know, those are a lot of the challenges that we had to solve over the last eight years of commercial operation. Finally, and I even saw a question in the chat about this, about like, well, how do you get regulatory approval for this? It took a long time. I mean, we've been working with the FAA for five years, and it was only in November of 2023 that Zipline was finally awarded full regulatory permission to do this in all 50 states in the United States. Um, so that was a pretty long, difficult process. It was really powerful that Zipline was able to give the FAA, you know, at the time, 70 million commercial autonomous miles with zero human safety incidents. That was what gave them the conviction and confidence to give Zipline the first certification in this overall industry in the history of the country. And, um, and so that regulatory barrier is now behind us. But I think a lot of people and a lot of businesses may not realize that. You know, that was a really big impediment to progress two years ago. Today, it is not. In fact, you know, it's in the rearview mirror. So those are just a few of the things. Like, I, I think that at the end of the day, the, you know, creating an incredibly magical customer experience for delivery and then doing it in a, and that means, you know, delivering eight pound payloads, 10 times as fast, half the cost, zero emission. And the other aspect of it is always just going to be like safety, reliability, community acceptance. I saw a question in the chat about noise. These systems are designed, like we build everything from scratch. I mean, right on the other side of this wall is Zipline's entire, you know, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, firmware engineering, aerodynamics, aeroacoustics, software. Um, we design everything from scratch. These vehicles are actually designed to be incredibly quiet. You kind of have to hear it to believe it. Far quieter than the kind of normal, terrible sounding quadcopters that people are used to hearing. Um, and we keep the aircraft really far away when we're delivering. The aircraft actually stays 100 meters in the air. And we'll show, maybe, maybe that's a, a good transition <laughs> to show the video. Of how that Segue all works. to the video. Why don't you show us what we're talking about? Yeah. So again, if people don't have the media player um, maximized, they can, they can do that in the upper right hand corner. But yeah, I mean, you know, this is just kind of giving a sense for like any family can, um, you know, in this case, you might be making dinner and you realize you need something, you're missing an ingredient. Um, you can pull out your phone, place an order. Um, someone at, uh, you know, in, in that business can load whatever they want into the droid. The droid can be retracted into the main aircraft. These docks we install on the sides of buildings in 24 hours or less. So the aircraft can dock in the dock and undock. We fly out to the GPS coordinates of the home that we're delivering to. And then we, with, again, like sub 60 second accuracy, um, tell the customer when we're delivering, the droid lowers from the main aircraft, the droid controls its position in X and Y axis and delivers with dinner plate level accuracy. So this is how we're able to deliver in a way that is silent as well as super accurate. So we can serve something like 99% of addresses in the US today. Um, so that, that just gives like a little bit of a sense for what this looks like end to end. Um, we think that the only way that this technology can really scale is if it is like dramatically safer and dramatically quieter than the current means of delivery. So when people hear drone delivery, they usually think of like really annoying loud quadcopter. The reality is these vehicles are both much quieter than quadcopters and we keep them far away when we're making deliveries to homes. And so both of those things are, are big advantages, um, you know, relative to the way that delivery works today. Well, you know, I had to laugh looking at that video. I can envision a lot of hip grandmas and grandpas having an exciting new part of taking care of the grandkids day. You know, let's let's go order this we pizza and we'll wait for the wait for it. Yeah. Okay. We were talking to a cut. So, you know, we have all these customers who are ordering. Um, we're, you know, making food deliveries in SLC every day. And like we were talking to one of them the other day and he does a barbecue for all of his neighbors every weekend. And he makes a point of ordering via zip line because he's like, you know, he's basically bragging about the fact he's one of the first people in SLC to have access to the service. And now all of his neighbors have signed up for the waiting list because they also want to get added. So I think, you know, humans are again, like they, they, they quickly adapt to the new normal. And I don't think it'll take humans very long to be like, oh yeah, three minute delivery that's less expensive and zero emission. We want that. It's, you know, the last thing I'll say, and I don't want to ramble, is that I mentioned that there'll be four and a half billion instant deliveries done in the US this year. It's interesting that demand is so high when the cost of delivery is actually pretty high and it's somewhat slow. And I'm sure at least some people feel guilty about the environmental impact. If you think about removing all those barriers, like it's 10 times as fast and, and half the cost and zero emission, 
uh, it's actually interesting to think about how bi how much bigger that market will get. I mean, is yeah. the total de demand 10 billion deliveries? Is it 20 billion? Is it 30 billion? It's like hard to say exactly, but I is think that things, this is going to lead to Or is it things that were not previously previously associated with delivery, like exactly. you know, uh, toilet paper and uh, paper towels and stuff? You know, who knows? Who knows what that number shifts to? Uh, analyzing the existing number is not is I don't think the the whole part of the picture. This this will change things to make it a dis, uh, a totally different market. And then also I add you know the, the thing that I was just I was went to a Tiger game last night and I was talking with my cousins. We were talking a lot about like is tip culture out of control? And they you know I have an opinion like I want our guys to be paid really well and tipped really well. And it just everyone has a really strong opinion. But I I don't think we're tipping the drone. Right, uh, that doesn't really make sense. So there's an economic benefit on a, like an immediate economic benefit on a consumer from a consumer perspective, like right away. I think that's one of the components. I think every, I, I think everyone on some level is on board with the you know lowering carbon footprints. Some people, are, it's a big passion point. I'm in the, I'm somewhere in the middle. I think a lot of people are you know you know left or right of that. But like every single person wants to be responsible about getting their food. But doesn't love paying the tip. We pay the tip because we feel like it's an important part oh, of the problem. Okay. But if we can get out of that, it, that's a win. That would be really nice. Delivering the same food at the lower price, that should, I think that's part of the, that's part of the future that we're all hoping for. Yeah, and I think I, I would point out. Look, I mean, a lot of those tips. I mean, first of all, I don't think people know. A lot of times, the tips don't even go directly to the drivers. <laughs> it's ways for the platforms to try to make their unit economics work. And I think the important thing here is that, like. You know, we're, we've sort of built this whole system on top of an inflationary cost model, which is like when you're using, you know, humans and gasoline as your primary cost inputs, the reality That's is true. the cost of humans and the cost of gasoline are going up and they've been going up every year for the last 30 years and, and they will continue to climb over the next 10 years. We think that there needs to be this fundamental shift toward deflationary logistics, yeah. deflationary cost models for logistics. Yeah. And in that circumstance, your main inputs are electricity and circuit boards. And those things are getting less expensive over time. And I think, you know, a lot, yeah, a lot of the craziness you see with like tips. I mean, when I placed an order the other day on one of these platforms, I got hit with a, a regulatory fee, an extended range fee, a rush fee, taxes, uh, service fee, and tip, <laughs> you know, and it's like, at some point you're like, man, this experience sucks. Like, I don't yeah. feel, right. I feel like I'm being taken advantage of basically. And, and so I think, again, no one is to blame here. I think what is to blame is the fact that some of these cost models are just not sustainable. Yeah. Hi, just a quick, one minor clarification, just for, so I don't like have an, uh, uh, like, oh crap moment on the way home. Of course, 100% of tips through jets directly go to their drivers. It's those third party yeah. people that like, they got some other things going on, but like ours, ours directly, ours directly all go. But we're also many thousands of drivers, you know, on a national basis, short of what we feel that we need. I mean, this is this is a big opportunity. This automa this new channel is not, it, it's not necessarily taking away jobs. This is filling in a filling in a void that we have been struggling for years to fill. That is getting deeper by the day and more frustrating by the day because of those other platforms, which is just, and I don't fault them for making money or for like, you know, building a better mousetrap. But the reality is, is we're going to have to move too. And this is a, this is a great direction for us to move. Good point. I love that point about the inflationary nature, of two key components, people and gasoline. I mean, it's absolutely true. It's uh, hard to get around that point. Uh, let's talk for a minute if I might. And Aaron, you might've touched a little bit on this in some of your earlier comments, but what, what do you have to do put in place for adopting drone technology at, at jets i mean what, what are some of the, the big picture stuff or the general stuff you're already thinking about uh to make this work or to make it test well yeah what's so as you know in context i think everyone understands that this is something we are preparing to do but haven't uh haven't implemented yet but one of the nice things about zipline specifically is that they're thinking about this in a holistic fashion they're installing the platforms. They're they're working with us for the concept of a business rules engine. You know, we're going to have to do some integration into our website and our AI platforms and the, the things that are consumer facing. I mean, but those but those are and not even they're not even big hurdles. They're small hurdles. They're not blockers. Um, 
so for us, it's selling in the concept, it's getting people aware, it's um, answering questions, it's you know figuring out what our customer experience modifications are going to be, and then it's some minor technical stuff. But like, in with the exception of just being you know on the ball enough to like lean in and a little bit earlier, I, we don't. This is not going to. We are not anticipating a heavy lift. It's you know we're not going to go from like z uh, like one to four hundred stores in a week, but like you know. The, the, I think the pathway. I'm feeling. I'm feeling high level of confidence as we enter into this uh, implementation phase. Okay, Keller, do you have any thoughts about generalized uh, in industry embracing this? Some of the things you might not have touched on um, related to the restaurant industry and drone adoption. Uh, some some big picture stuff maybe that you think about and you've already been thinking about. I think we did a really nice job of summarizing and I think Aaron said it best. Like, I think the thing that gets me pretty fired up is that, you know, I have a lot of, you know, in, I think people have really close relationships with the restaurants that they deeply love and that they go to with their families and that they, you know, um, either they are patrons for. And I think things shouldn't get in the middle of that relationship. Like the great brands that, people have these close emotional connections to should not have their customers held hostage in the way that Aaron was describing. They should own those customers. They should have that relationship. And, you know, we should be able to provide delivery solutions that are simpler, faster, cleaner, less expensive that amplify that relationship and brand love rather than like get in the middle of it and muddle it and then try to like hold customer's hostage and take like 25% of the value of the order, as Aaron was saying. Yeah. So I think that is like, that is I, the main, a lot, so many of our customers, I think Jets first and foremost, are kind of seeing that main strategic, like they, they, they have the strategic vision to see like the different paths here and to see that it is super important to be in control of their own destiny and maintain that direct relationship with customers. Thanks for that thought. Uh, Aaron, I wanted to ask you, uh, practical side, restaurateurs are always practical, but yeah. how big of an IT team do you have to have to make all the digital transformation possible for JETS, uh, including the adoption of drone technology? I mean, do you need a big IT? You mentioned you didn't think it's going to be a 500-foot yeah. wall to scale, but how big a team do you need? You know, so uh, one of the things I love is knowing that uh, 50 miles away at Domino's where I used to be, um, there's a room full of somewhere in the there's there's effectively an org chart that has maybe 300 names on it uh and they're doing some innovative work we're doing some innovative work also and uh there are five people on my team uh we have some third-party contractors and stuff so like you know we have a team that goes out and you know installs computers and that's so we have some contractors it's a little bit of an oversell to say just five but I think the bigger thing that's exciting about a lot of the technologies that are coming out, uh, AI ordering platforms and bots and drones and uh, a lot of this newer stuff is that uh, the, I think the, the, it is not these opportunities won't just be available to the organizations that have 300 people in their IT team. It'll be, it's going to be available to us. It's more, and, you know, to, and in Keller had the exact right sentiment. It, it is not... I don't know, fair is not the exact right word, but like it should be like on a sort of on an ethical level, it should be available to everyone. And these and it should not be exclusionary. Ultimately, the customer is going to win in that way, you know, and it, and I, I'm not losing fact. I'm not losing track of the fact that like in Rwanda, we're delivering vaccines. I'm like, oh, God, that's really awesome. And we're going to send you pizzas and eventually, you know. Uh, I'm sure somehow eventually Amazon delivers toilet paper to your pay to your house because of this. But like this should be a thing that we just move to collectively. But and, and I think the the infrastructure necessary to do that is to start or the, the the I guess the ethos to start to do that is to not have it be this dependency on a hundred people sitting here to get this accomplished. That is it's you're just starting off in the wrong direction because then you got to replicate it for all those people. This like centralization on some stuff, that totally makes sense. There are just five people. We have, we like enough that we fit in a car to go, we fit in my truck to be able to go to lunch together. That's how small my team is. All right, thanks, appreciate that insight. Um, you know, 
This is a question for Keller. There's a lot of reasons uh, to see drone delivery as superior to ground-based delivery, but what about the cost to the business? So let's, obviously you're scaling up, you're seeing things, you're getting users on board. Can you talk a little bit about cost, Keller, versus maybe ground delivery? Yeah, I mean, um, if the you, you, you're asking kind of specifically about unit economics, or you're saying like the cost of building and developing this technology as a whole? Well, why don't we take either or both as you're comfortable with it? Uh, the cost. Yeah, I mean, I think, people, restaurateurs I think always that, ask about cost, so I'm trying to cover ground here. Yeah, I think that with any new technology, costs actually usually start really high, and then you have to kind of like ride down this cost curve. The good news is that we have already, you know, we have already done a ton of work. Um, We've already done a ton of work uh, over the last eight years transitioning down that cost curve. I mean, when we launched, we told investors it was going to cost us $30 of delivery to do these you know, like life-saving deliveries of medical products. It ended up costing us $300 the first year. So we lost a lot of money on those on those few deliveries that we made. But year over year, we went from $300 to $150 to $80 to $60 to $20 to $12. And, uh, and this next generation platform is designed to be well below that and, and significantly less expensive than the delivery platforms straight up. So I think the, the cool thing to realize on the unit economic side is that we're also not stopping there. Like cars and as, I, as we kind of were describing before, cars and people are not getting less expensive over the next 10 years. Whereas this technology is in a very nascent stage. I mean, we are we are only 1% of the way there in terms of what's possible. And as the technology continues to improve and mature and evolve, uh, it will become it will become not just less expensive, it will become insanely less expensive. Um, and yeah, and then from a, you know, from a development perspective, I mean, Zipline is really lucky to, I think there are a lot of investors and part, you know, Zipline has a lot of investors who believe very deeply that there is this big transition coming in logistics toward zero emission autonomy. And um, and so you know, we've been able to partner with a lot of the best investors in the world, same investors who invested in Tesla and SpaceX, uh, to, build, to fund the development of the technology so that when we're launching with partners, those partners really only have to worry about, like, what's the cost per delivery? And we're, we're saving money from the first delivery onward. Okay, thank you. Let me take a look at my notes. We've covered a lot of ground here, and I don't want to be repetitive about anything. But let's. let's I realize, Alan. You know, we have we have a ton of good questions in the chat. So if okay, let's. We can go to those. Hang on. Uh, let's see here. I see someone asking about becoming a Zipline partner. Um, you know, I'm sorry that we haven't responded faster. You're right that we are currently getting a lot of inquiries. And um, Frank, if you, um, you know, if you shoot us an email or just like find me on Twitter also. I will just respond to you instantly and um, we will dig in with you. I'm sorry we haven't, um, sorry we haven't moved faster. Okay, let me find one. There's a question here that asks, other than drones, well, uh, all right, we'll ask this one, it's, it's in there. Other than drones, what's one of the technology you're most excited about? Let's go with Aaron on that one. Um, other than drones, I mean, uh, we're doing a lot with uh, AI for ordering channels. I can't wait for the day that um, there is crystal clear audio at the drive through window when I am stressed and trying to get the chicken nuggets thrown to the back seat. Um, I, I, I think that the drive through experience is um, not great. Uh, I think that's I think that's really exciting. And I know this one's like, a, a you know, an, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to redirect this one back into a thing that I just look, love the opportunity to bring up that does involve drones. One of the things that when you can when you can deliver scale, when you can instantly deliver scale, the opportunities to do like hyper time sensitive marketing something or another's um, has previously always been limited by the number of drivers in your store. A little bit of an asterisk when the third party hit, but like. If we're able to do these things where like we can anticipate that a hundred things need to go out or maybe get, you know, like it's this influx, I think we're going to see cool and more interesting marketing opportunities. And it's those windows that are, they're going to be solved by like a little bit with third party, maybe with last mile stuff, but I think drones, a bigger opportunity, but like the shift in marketing and participation stuff is, is I, I think that's one of the bigger things I'm looking forward to uh, just as a person. 
it is, is, to be is, there, is there an example in your mind about how the drone world might do something you'd really like to see or do you not want to tip off your competitors um i th i have some i have some stuff sketched out um I think I think the opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one, um, or one v AI conversation type experience that uh, leads into order generation that can be instantly fulfilled in times that are not typically associated with classic ordering times, uh, perhaps even for things that uh, aren't our core focus product, like think six pack of water to the beach because we know you're at the beach. Uh, how awesome is that? It, you know, pizza, it's going to allow us to extend, uh, or you know, hey, we ha uh, we had an opportunity to get you know a lot more Pepsi today, so you know we could we could make more hyper local decisions in our local store marketing because we have um, variable um, demand uh, tool sets. I think those those things are what will be really interesting over time. Actually, that's a fascinating point about the beach and the water. Go ahead. Yeah, and, and to like you know to extend that point, I mean, I remember talking to some friends, I think during COVID and maybe beyond, who basically like never use their kitchen at all. So they don't grocery shop, they don't use their kitchen, and I always kind of felt like, wow, like these people are so weird. You know, that, that's just strange. I can't really imagine living like that. That's kind of hardcore. That's crazy, but. I actually, you know, it's certainly possible that that will become more and more normal over time. Like in a world where you just have a magical portal and you can yeah. just order whatever you need and it's and pass through the and zero friction and extremely low cost, it might be the case that more and more people do not need to be like constantly stocking a refrigerator and constantly worrying about cooking and then like, oh, this expired, I'll throw it in the trash. Like it's kind of provocative but you know no, it, it only requires like 10 percent of the population yeah go ahead Aaron. i don't know if this ever happens but like if we're really dreaming it up for a second just like thinking outside the box about like what the platform means to society which i think that's what we're doing man my mom makes the best eggs i don't know why it's better out of her cast iron skillet but this like con like this like higher level of connectivity i don't know if we're ever picking up stuff from my mom's house and dropping eggs off at my house about 30 minutes away but like man the opportunity is uh man that's awesome or even like you know I, like this could be a different version like looking more holistically this could this could shift on demand something or another you know think uh thing that happened at a festival uh if i mean everyone who's on social media right now knows that there are a lot of memes going around uh, you know, meme generation for things that like happen on t-shirts and, and whatnot the, the, the possibilities of relatively speaking connected society through uh commercial components like t-shirts and food and eggs I, that's really exciting and this is really increasing the speed to which we can facilitate that is the core component that it's, it happens to be drones but like the benefit is uh speed and connectivity and i think you like, know, i'm you sorry know, we, we have an okay. analogy which is which is the internet you know we i mean it used to be if i wanted to send a letter i would either you know write it by hand and then pay someone to you know ride it by horse or like drive it by car yeah. to someone to you know convey a message to you Aaron. now i will just text you or email you and so we, we now have this world where we move information around um instantly at z near zero cost yeah i think it's pretty profound to think about what happens when you can start doing that with all the different things we're talking about whether it's jet's pizza or your mom's mm -hmm. eggs or a product that you might have to go to cvs or walgreens for otherwise like yeah, I think you know we might be seeing, you know, I think AI and robotics is going to make it possible for us to build new kinds of logistics systems that yeah. look and feel and behave more like the internet than like traditional logistics. Yeah. You know, I have to back up for a second because uh, Aaron's example of water at the beach just reminds me that the whole delivering where you are world gets a lot better and a lot bigger. No yeah, longer. a certain other a certain other pizza operator made big hay out of they'll deliver to you where you are uh, using. Uh, uh, yeah, Geo, I was around. Geo and stuff. I was around at a certain other pizza operator and uh, talking about that till I was blue in the face to, to deliver to non USPS address uh, uh, areas, golf courses and soccer fields and stuff like that. They haven't really. No one seems to have really done a lot with that yet. 
because I think yeah. there there's just a well, shy... there's got to be a road there, right? I mean, there's got to be a road there, and the delivery guy has to know how to walk around an unmapped uh, yeah. area of land, like a park or other things like that. Whereas zone uh, drone delivery has that mapped out with uh, location, right? Absolutely, it does. I'd love to be out on the boat and receive a jet's order. <laughs> I think That's we can good. do that. <laughs> we can make that happen. <laughs> I will volunteer to be the test case. The first, <laughs> the first boat delivery. Hey, uh, Keller, I'm curious just on a personal level. What was the first? I mean, are you within a deliverable area of any restaurants where, like, when you lay down at night and you're in your bed, um, and you go out on what I assume I don't know if you live in an apartment or a house, but you're out on your deck. What if, if theoretically, what's the like the first thing you could get ordered to your house? What would it be, or what did you do? <laughs> you're saying like the first time I ever used um, instant delivery in general, or you mean yeah. for zipline specifically? Zipline specifically. You know, I. Um, it, what's funny is like I live in San Francisco. The company is located in South San Francisco, and California isn't one of our early launch states. <laughs> I won't say anything more than that. I, I, mean, might, the, get one, I might get a jet ski to yeah, deliver so you're my house. Get you get when you're I do. I, that's exactly. awesome. Detroit, Detroit is one of our launch states. Texas yeah. is one of our launch states. You know, Colorado is one of our launch states. Um, All right, we well, invited that, over on that day. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to come over to your house to get to experience zipline delivery. I mean, I have gotten to go visit. You know, I, I've spent a fair amount of time at um, houses in Bentonville where we serve customers today and in Salt Lake City where we serve customers today. I'm constantly, you know, blown away by, um, I mean, people just, I mean, for example, you know, we have this big partnership with Walmart in the U.S. and we st started with the idea of, oh, we'll d deliver health and wellness and pharmacy um products and he rapidly explode into everything people are ordering rotisserie chickens they're ordering birthday cakes i think a lot of times people are ordering eggs just to try to test us and see if they can you know figure out how the system right. fails they want, um, yeah, they want to play along it's very exciting exactly people are very and and, and i can't honestly i could go on and on about the funny stories i mean we went to one house we watched the delivery and it went right into the guy's pool. And we were like, oh my God, like what the, you know, that's, this, this is not supposed to do that. What, what's going on? He's like, no, 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 no. We put the pool in after we added zipline service. Oh. And I don't want you guys to change it. I like fishing it out of the pool. So it's like, there's like a ton oh. of weird stuff. You know, we could totally change it. So it's not going into this guy's pool and he has to fish it out. But like, I think that, um, anyway, there are like a million weird stories of like when people, you know, the future's, weirder than we can imagine. And, um, you know, people find their own funny ways of like using the service. And we couldn't really have expected all these use cases that we see coming out of the woodworks. Um, I think that, yeah, that, that, that probably the biggest, you know, the biggest takeaway is that, um, you know, I think one thing that Zipline's done well is we have focused on launching with like partners and in communities that like are super excited and deeply appreciate the value of the service. So this is one of the advantages that we had launching for the first five years in Africa before we brought the technology to the United States. Um, you know, those countries were like deeply, uh, you know, uh, deeply committed to this idea of like, we're going to use this technology to save lives and, and um, reduce emissions and save money. And when we're launching in the U S in places like Salt Lake city and Bentonville and Detroit, um, you know, Ann Arbor, Michigan, like th these places, I think are usually not the places that are thought of as like, oh yeah, that's like the center of tech in the US. But we're actually, the cool thing about this kind of technology is it isn't starting in the kind of like coastal cities that most people think of when they think of robotics or AI. This is actually a really cool opportunity for, you know, parts of the world that have sometimes been like overlooked or aren't necessarily considered to be like the tech leader. Um, yeah. th that's actually where this technology is gonna have the biggest impact. And so, Launching in those kinds of geographies and metros is a, it's just a huge opportunity um, for for us and, and for jets, but also for those states and for those communities. Cool. I don't know, Aaron. If he's saying eggs are a big test case for some of these customers, your mom might have a new side business going. I there. think, yeah, <laughs> it's, I think it's. I think she puts bacon fat in it. I think that it's, I got to figure out how. I got to learn to do this. But if not drone delivery, that's the next choice. Okay. Hey, I'm going to I'm going to say we need to we need to start wrapping this up. We've we've filled our hour and we've had some great conversation here. And I know it's a topic a lot of people are interested in and excited about. So thank you gentlemen for that time. So, before we go though, I do want to 
thank our topic authorities for the day, uh, Keller Renato Clifton of Zipline and Aaron Nelson of Jet Pizza. Also, we'd like to share our appreciation for Zipline sponsorship of this program, which made it possible. And a final thanks goes to you, your audience, for our time, your time, you, the audience, for your time. I think I can get that right if I work at it. Um, please keep an eye out for the email with session replay information for your review or to share with an interested colleague. We find interested colleagues actually thank folks who share these links with them, so please do that. Uh, check out the resources widget of your console if you haven't done so. And we hope to see you for future NRN webinars. But for now, know that all of us here wish you a very good day. Thank you. Thanks.